sao in ring shring ka e la ring asang ka hala ring ta ka la ring sao ain kling ring shring Namaste. So I was doing some marketing writing for the first or front page of our course site. And I came up with a list of some of the benefits from following the Sri Vidya. And so I like it so much, I want to share it with you because it really shows up uh, the kind of benefits that we get from this path. The first one is sharp spiritual intelligence. What does that mean? Why do we call intelligence sharp? Because intelligence is based on discrimination, distinguishing one thing from another. And the sharper we can make our discrimination, then the more effective intelligence we have. So in the beginning, of spiritual life, everything is kind of blurry, you know? It's kind of not very clear which is what and who is where and why. But as we advance on the path, and especially once we align ourselves with the Universal Mother and we come into her direct service, then everything is so clear, you know, just like in the morning, it may be dark and misty and it's hard to make out what's what. But as soon as the sun comes up, everything is clear and we know exactly where we are and what's around us. It's like that. The next one is freedom from chronic disease. Now, I want to tell you a personal story so you know that I'm not just making this up. I had a chronic infection that I picked up from a botched root canal, I don't know, 25 years ago in the U.S. And this was slowly spreading throughout my body and I was getting skin sores and boils and all kinds of nasty symptoms. And of course, since the staph, staphylococcus, spreads through the nervous system, it was also affecting, you know, that stuff and endocrines and everything. Now, what is it, a year later, a year and a half after starting the Sri Vidya discipline, I'm completely free from that. And it persisted for years. I tried all kinds of medicines, couldn't get rid of it. But as soon as I started chanting Soda Shi Mantra, the whole thing disappeared. Next one is easy and peaceful passing away. I want to share another personal story, which is the passing away of my Sri Vidya Guru, Jnana Shakti Swami. That was about a year ago, almost exactly a year ago, maybe a little more. He was 95 years old. He'd lived a long and full life. He was a very happy man with lots of friends. He had benefited many, many people spiritually. But he never tried to start an organization. He never tried to gain followers or disciples. He really had only two disciples, <laughs> me, and the fellow who introduced me to him, who for a long time was my auto rickshaw driver. And I was so impressed by his integrity, by his simplicity, and by his bliss. He's really the one who brought me into the Sri Vidya. Because you can find many temples of the goddess in India, and you can find many people who purport to teach the Sri Vidya and the associated disciplines. But 
it's hard to find somebody who really embodies the mood of the mother and who uh, doesn't try to pile up material treasures, you know, uh, and organize things and <laughs> make a, himself a good fortune. Well, his death was so noble and so peaceful. I asked him about a week before he passed away if he's in any pain. And he said, no, not at all. He was completely relaxed completely at ease and he was not clinging to the body, the mind, his identity or his many friends or anything. And he simply passed away in peace. I happened to arrive at his ashram just at the moment that he left his body and I was able to facilitate his transfer. And uh, it was a very profound experience, very beautiful experience, and one that, well, you had to be there <laughs> to really appreciate. Another benefit, profound ease, beauty, and grace. You know, one of the things that really impressed me about Ramana Maharshi, also my sannyas guru, Jnana Shakti Swami, was their ease. They're not trying hard. They're just being. This is a wonderful thing. And it really shows the, the nature of a highly elevated being. That they're not trying to become anything. It's they already are. <laughs> they already are everything they want to be. And whatever they lack is added to them by the mother. So she is the ocean of beauty. In fact, the wonderful hymn written by Shankaracharya, Saundarya Lahari, means the tidal wave of beauty. Saundarya is beauty and Lahari is a tidal wave, a tsunami. So that's, have, you, have you ever seen a video of a tsunami? It's like this wave that comes and just keeps on coming and coming. It doesn't stop. But that's what her beauty is like. And also her grace. Grace means the effortless accomplishment of high goals. See, effortless movement, effortless beauty, effortless knowledge, effortless dance. Huh? She dances and sings through life. Her voice is so melodic and beautiful hmm, that even Saraswati uh, with her veena just, just puts her instrument in the case, you know. <laughs> she doesn't even try because... Uh, Ma Tripura Sundari's voice is so beautiful and musical. So another one is protection from pernicious enemies. Anyone who tries to do anything significant is going to have enemies. Not that they go out of their way to create them, but you know, the world and especially the internet is full of haters, cowards who hide behind the anonymity of online platforms to spread dirt and poison about perfectly good people. So I, one of my friends who writes a, a, an amazing uh, site, I don't know if it's a blog or whatever, but it's called uh, Meaningness, meaningness.com. Uh, David Chapman, he once said that to discuss anything online is going to give is going to result in death threats. Huh? That's just part of the cost of doing business. Said so you have to be ready for that. But when you're in touch with the mother, all that seems so insignificant. And really, these people are completely insignificant, and stupid, and ineffectual. So all these pernicious enemies just seem to evaporate under her protection. 
And another one, very interesting one, is abundant wealth and other opulences. What are the opulences? Wealth, beauty, fame, power, knowledge, and renunciation. Uh -huh. These are opulences. So all of these become very easily attained for the devotee of the Universal Mother. And I'm not going to try to give evidence on this. You have to try this yourself and experience these benefits. And then you'll know what I'm talking about. <laughs> A lot of the wealth is spiritual wealth. The calm, the poise, the grace, the beauty of the spiritual existence. I mean, it just has to be experienced. Just, there's really no way to describe it. Another one is effortless conquest of self-destructive habits. Another one goes along with that. Release from self-created mental anxiety and distress. Uh, most of our problems, in fact, if you ask the Buddha, he would say all of our problems, all of our suffering and distress is self-caused because we make bad decisions. We make decisions on the basis of desire, of getting what we want, or what we think we want. But usually it gets us in trouble. <laughs> it gets us in trouble unless we take the decision to approach self-realization. Now, when we do that, we get all kinds of help that we can't even see uh, from beyond. We get all kinds of support. And so many of our problems just seem to vanish, you know, because we're not anymore making bad decisions. We're making the right kind of decisions that are bringing us closer to self-realization, Nibbana, Nirvana and moksha, liberation. So again, I'm going to run out of time here, but some of the more important ones are easy access to even the highest meditative states. And if you chant her mantras, the Siddhi mantra, the Sodashi mantra, you know, Panchadashi mantra, any of her confidential mantras, which are only given by initiation, you will find yourself pulled as if by gravity into high meditative states that for most people are very difficult to attain. But you find yourself attaining them effortlessly. It's just amazing. I mean, the first two years I was in Tiruvannamalai, I was studying Ramana's teaching, and I was making huge efforts at meditation. <laughs> and even then, I was able to attain only temporary results. You know, I would be able to fix my mind for a few minutes, and then it would blow away. But when chanting her mantras, these states come all by themselves. And they're accompanied by such beauty and such bliss. I mean, it's really hard to express it. You just have to try it. That's the only solution. And a renewed appreciation of the simplicity and beauty of nature. Like I was saying the other day, just seeing the trees, just hearing the little birds, you know, and seeing them fly around. I have a bird feeder and bath and they come all hours of the day. I like to sit outside, chant my mantra, and watch them. Uh, they're so beautiful, so simple. See, life is basically simple, and we miss the point because we get caught up in all these complexities that are artificial, these abstractions and distinctions that are simply verbal, semantic, you know, like, did you ever go to the border of a country? Huh? The border between one country and another. 
You know, is it, is it marked on the earth? No. Is there some kind of a natural feature? Well, sometimes. But more often, it's just a line drawn on a map by some idiot bureaucrat somewhere. You know, the British were famous for this, partitioning India into, into Bharata, Pakistan, and Bangladesh, for example. And this is causing so much trouble, right? Because it's artificial, and everybody knows it. Part of Varsha was such a big country, Afghanistan, Mongolia, parts of China, Indonesia, Thailand, all were part of Bharata. So now Bharata has gotten chopped up into so many little countries, and guess what? There's all kinds of trouble. Well, who would have guessed? <laughs> because these things are artificial. They're not natural. Nature does not divide one country from another. It's just one big reality. You see, and this is the mother's mood, that everything is one, everything is part of the whole. So this view gives us deep insights into the nature of reality, and especially the nature of spiritual life. And it reduces or eliminates the effect of the boundaries, the artificially created uh, inhibitions that stop people from moving in spiritual life when they are ready to go to the next higher level. For example, I was a member of a bhakti cult for a long time. And when I tried to leave and study other disciplines, I got so much social problems uh, and rejection from my so-called God brothers that it made it very difficult for me to get myself out of that context and into another context that was actually appropriate for my stage of spiritual life. But within the Sri Vidya, within the mother's ambit, huh, her environment, there are no such boundaries. Just like there are no natural boundaries between one country and another. So, because all the knowledge of all the stages of self-realization is openly available in the Sri Vidya, it's very easy when it's appropriate to move from one level of spiritual life to the next higher level of life and practices. So, this is just one of the many benefits for uh, the devotees of the Universal Mother. And that's why we're advocating taking her path, the Sri Vidya, which is the only complete path to perfect enlightenment. Aum Tat Sat. Aum Shakti Aum.